So James 5.16 says, Confess your trespasses to, to one another, to say sorry. Sorry, I've done something wrong. Sorry, I have not listened to you. That we really feel sorry about that. Now, it's easier for us to say sorry to God than to people. Because God doesn't yell back. When we say sorry, God doesn't yell back. But sometimes when we say sorry to people, they yell back. They might not be happy. They might say more. They might say more bad things we have done. So sometimes we don't like to say sorry. And also the other person has faults, so we don't want to say sorry. But we say, if I've done anything that offends you, please, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I've done that. Please forgive me. Okay, and I'm willing to forgive that that will say in a marriage that we have hurt each other many, many times. If you forgive men their trespasses, your Heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Understand that people hurt each other, hurt others. Everyone has hurt others because they have been hurt by others. People who hurt others have been hurt by other people. So we have compassion on them and be willing to bless them and forgive them. Now, if your spouse hurts you many times, understand that your spouse has been hurt many times since the childhood. And that's why your spouse would hurt you. So you understand that and then you have compassion on the spouse. And then keep managing our hearts until we can step by step forgive them. Say words of grace to people more. Now, you understand that for God to us, God give us grace. God's grace is His forgiveness, His kindness, the work of the Holy Spirit, uh, the reminder of the Holy Spirit, His spiritual gifts, His rewards, His joy and peace. All these are the grace of God to us. But we also say words of grace to people that we say words to show our love for people, that we want to treat each other kindly, that we say, I care about you, I love you, I appreciate you, you are precious, thank you, you are helpful, you have done well, you are great, you have tried very hard, I noticed your improvement, you have impacted my life, you have many gifts and many strengths, God likes you, God will use you greatly. So we should learn to say things to show that we appreciate the other person, we like the other person, we want to be kind to the other person. Then the other person will feel good. So we need to say words of grace. That is very important in relationship. Now when we preach to people too, don't just tell people, you have to do this, you have to do that. That is words of the law. We need to say words of grace and say, God cares about you. It's wonderful that you come to church this morning, that you worship God, it's something good. And God likes you and I like you. And I want to bless you. I want to help you. I appreciate you. What you've done for the church is good. What you've done for, for other people is good. So we can appreciate people, whatever they've done. Now, they, have, might, they might have done something wrong, but then we can appreciate them for whatever they've done right. So these are words of grace. We need to learn to say words of grace. Like to our children, we'll say, You are very precious. I like you. You are special. You have a good heart. You have some good qualities. I like you. And we need to learn to say that to our spouse and to our children. Okay, now... We need to say the words of the law. That means what to do. We need to do things, but we say it gently. Okay, these are some ways, exploring and guiding. How can we solve this problem? Do you think our relationship can improve? Do you want to have better communication with me? So it's exploring. Exploring means we don't know what's the solution. We try to find a way. We explore what are some possibilities. Guide is we know an answer, but we guide their person. I, 
what do you think that you would do? I would feel very happy. So I know what he would do would make me happy, but I want to guide him to think. So what do you think that you would do now that would make me happy? So we can ask the other person. And then if the person cannot uh, answer, then we'll say, well, you listen to me, I'll be happy. You respond to me, I'll be ha very happy. And you s tell me your real feelings, I'm, I'll be happy. So that is telling them, then it's teaching, telling or teaching, okay? So first is exploring, trying to find out. Now, you notice many of these are questions. It's better to use questions when we want to communicate with the spouse we can say, how can we communicate better? How can we care for each other better? How can we help each other? How can we have a better marriage? So instead of saying, you have to do this, you have to do that, we can say, how can we do better? Okay, and then teaching or telling them what to do. Isn't it better that we can talk positively? Now this is teaching, but in a question way. Is it, isn't it better, I, I miss the word it, isn't it better that we can talk positively? So if we can talk positively, it will be greater, greater. So isn't it better? Can we appreciate each other? So we are actually telling the person to appreciate each other. And then requesting, would you help me with uh, help me wash the dishes. I really appreciate you would help me. So requesting. Now sometimes we need to point out the mistake of their person. When you talk like that, how do you think the people will feel? Now this is using a question way. This is instead of saying, you talk like that, nobody likes you. You are you, you're too rough on people. That is heavy rebuking. Now we need to talk about the law. That means requirement, what we need to do. But we want to talk about it in a gentle way. This is very important in communication. So I hope you all remember this. When you want uh, to have better communication with the spouse, you can say, how can we talk so that we have a better relationship? Uh, how can I explain myself more so that you understand me? Did I explain myself clearly? How can I explain myself uh, clearer? How can I help you to understand me better? So use questions to help each other to understand each other. Sometimes we need to do teaching and so the pastor, if you understand this teaching, you can watch my other teaching on marriage and communication and then you can teach your members. Now sometimes People think that it's, it's, you know, it's not necessary to learn these kind of things. But actually, um, the Bible does talk about, you know, listen. Be quick to listen. So it's listening is something we need to learn. And be gentle in our words. The, the Bible teaches us that. We need to learn to talk in a gentle way. That we need to learn to be kind to people. We need to learn how to relate to people, how to, how to take care of our emotions, and how to help uh, to bring about healing to the other person's feelings. So we need to learn all this, not just uh, sometimes people just teach, you know, how to pray, how to, <coughs> how to do evangelism, how to take care of sins. We also need to teach people how to relate to each other, how to love each other, how to care for each other, how to build up the marriage, how to listen to their person and care about, about each other. <clears throat> okay, now, to motivate, like yesterday we talked about motivating people with God's grace. We can motivate a spouse to change by God's grace. God is happy whenever we love each other. So God is happy. We tell them when we love each other, God is very happy. God is always, God always listens to our prayers. So we can pray together with confidence. Um, so God will listen to us. And so we can pray with confidence. So we're, we're guiding the other person. 
we are motivating the other person to pray to God. God knows your needs before you pray. So we can pray to Him uh, confidently. When you, will, you love each other and love God, He will raise us up to a high level. So when we love each other and we love God, then God will raise our family to a high level. And He will raise our life to a high level. So I hope that you all want to go to a high level in your life. And that is why I take care of every area of our life. My teaching includes taking care of problems of every area of our life so that we, you know, the whole life is managed by God. When we resolve our problems gently, God is very happy and will reward us richly. So we tell them, tell their spouse, we resolve the problem gently. We talk about the problems. And then God is very happy and He will reward us. Seven, we have ground for improvement when we love each other and love God. So we have, you know, we can improve when we can love each other. And um, we have room for improvement. Okay. Now, if there is a couple present today and then if you can use voice now I know the network might not be good but if you have a couple who is willing that I'll do counseling with you that I can do it right here to demonstrate to you how to do it counseling um, so if a couple is willing then you can use uh, the voice um, a voice uh, on whatsapp and then we can communicate to counsel to show you how to counsel a couple, okay? Now, also to guide the spouse or children to change with God's grace. I would like to have a better relationship with you. Do you think we can have a better relationship? So that's, do you think? And I would like to have a better relationship with you. Imagine how it will be li like when we have a better relationship and how can we have a better relationship I like it very much when you help me I like it very much when you talk to me and sincerely love and do good to people so that we sincerely love the other person and be kind to them and submit and love one another so in a, in a spouse relationship remember uh, uh, when I talk about wives, submit to your own husband as to the Lord. In 521, before this verse, it says submitting one to one another in the fear of God. So before Paul told the wives to submit to the husband, Paul told the husband and wife to submit to one another in the fear of God. So um, don't have this concept that only the wife submit to the husband and the husband will just direct the wife what to do. That is not in the Bible. The biblical teaching is that we submit to one another. And then the husband will love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her. For no one ever hated his own flesh but nourishes and cherishes it just as the Lord does the church. So we want to love our body, love our spouse, love our family. And this concept is very important. Relationship is more important than matters. Very often in families, they fight over matters. If someone breaks something, if something, if someone does something wrong in a family and then the other person is frustrated and yell at the other person, then the matter is more important than the relationship. But relationship is more important than matter because, because if there is problem with relationship, it's hard to fix and it hurt each other. But with matters, with cleanliness, with house chores, those things, we can always fix it. But of course, we want to fix it. We want to fix the matters. But it's very important in the process we don't hurt the relationship. So in Handling any kind of relationship is very important that we, that we um, uh, treasure the relationship more than 
we uh, treasure the the uh, the matters. Okay, now five languages of love is very important from the book called Five Languages of Love that uh, there are five ways that people express love in any kind of relationship including marriage and also uh, parents and children and pastor and church members and friends the five languages of lo love are words of affirmation words of uh, caring I love you I care about you you are precious and important to you and what you did to me is wonderful I'm happy to have you so uh, positive words and then quality time that uh, the time concentrated in relationship no cell phone or TV and giving gifts with a heart to bless the spouse uh, does not have to be expensive any kind of gift uh, to show that we love the other person and acts of service helping in small and big things doing things taking care of the other person acts of service is taking care of the other person the physical needs and then physical touch touching hugging kissing depends on the relationship what kind of physical touch so in different relationships, like pastor to members the pastor will say to the members words of affirmation you are important to me you are is, I'm happy to see you. you you are important to this church what you've done to the church is what you do to the, to the Lord and the Lord likes it and I like it and spend time with the family member uh, the church members too. spend time listening to them caring for them and giving gifts now of course now for church it would be different but we can still once in a while give some gifts to the church members or the church members give gifts to the pastor acts of service that the pastor would do a lot to take care of the needs of the fam uh, the church members and the church members can also do something to serve the pastor and the physical touch like uh, in a church would be uh, uh, shaking hands and some churches will be hugging so these are ways that we show uh, our these are languages of love and it's important that we understand the language of love of the spouse and do according to what he likes um, now for many males they like physical touch for many males so that wife would touch him he would feel comforted and then for many wife the words of affirmation and the quality time are important that that the husband will say positive words loving words and also spend time with her and the concept of the love bank that if you want to get money from the bank you have to deposit money in the bank before you can take money out so the love bank will deposit love and care and help and listening and support before we can get love and care and help and listening and support from the relationship if a person doesn't give love in a relationship he cannot get love and love and satisfy your spouse make the spouse happy satisfied let your found, fountain be blessed and rejoice with the wife of your youth so make your spouse happy rejoice with her make her feel happy now this is done in a marriage uh, ceremony that the, the uh, bridegroom will wash the feet of the bride and then the bride will wash the feet of the bridegroom to show that they will serve one another this is the ceremony of some weddings and it's a good practice so we do things to satisfy our spouse make the spouse happy and to change the spouse very often the, sometimes they just nag and they yell at each other it's not efficient low efficiency is to accuse to yell and bad attitude and nag and does not listen and teach too much this one is has low efficiency to be efficient to change someone we affirm that you're doing well you have done well and speak gently and with kindness and gentleness and listen and respond and don't nag and care about him and think about his needs guide him to analyze guide him to change guide him to analyze what he has done guide him to change 
Now, sometimes a family member doesn't want to change. If your spouse is a non-Christian and doesn't want to change, then you yourself get inner healing from God and get comfort from God. Live in peace and love and no burden that God takes care of me even though my spouse is not a Christian, my spouse is not kind to me, I still have peace from God, I don't carry any burden. And I treat him and her or her with peace and love. I treat her with love and influence him or her gradually. And then have realistic expectation, lower unrealistic expectation. What it means is, if this person is a non-Christian, we don't expect him to change so much. That if the person has never been, you know, gentle, you don't expect him to be gentle suddenly. So whatever changes he make, any small change, we appreciate that and we thank him for that. And we pray for wisdom and love to treat him. So if the spouse is a non-Christian, we don't expect much change, but we change ourselves. And hopefully that when we change, we can gradually change the other person. Okay. Um, how, let me see how much I have. How not to be affected by the other person. Now, if the other person has problems, we need to learn to not to be affected by them that we understand that all people are sinful. Therefore, people have sinned. Therefore, they have anger, they have frustration, that we're not affected by them. You know, if your spouse is, has problem, if you keep getting angry with him or expect much from him, it, uh, it's not going to work. So we lower the expectation. We understand that they have sinful nature and motivate people to take care of personal problems. That, um, that we don't get frustrated because of them, but we change them gradually. That, um, so we believe that God has planned great blessings for us. No one can take away His blessings except ourselves. If someone is wicked, it is their problem. If I'm affected by Him, I will lose God's blessing. So if your spouse is not a good person, or is not a good Christian, then I don't get frustrated. So it's Psalm 37, 7. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently. Do not fret when people succeed in their ways. When they carry out their wicked schemes, refrain from anger and, and turn from wrath. Do not fret. It leads only to evil. So do not get frustrated because of them. Because they, they have problem. We, we accept that, that they have problem. So we, God has wonderful plan. Now, if the spouse is not a Christian, God has a plan in my life. I can enjoy God. I can be blessed by God. Even my spouse is not a good person. I can still grow in Jesus. I don't have to be affected by Him. And I can have joy in the Lord. Now, this is difficult. That will say, I rejoice in the Lord. Even though after the spouse yell at, yell, yell at us, we will say, I enjoy God. I have strength from God. I have uh, strength from the Lord and I don't have to be bothered by Him. I can put down what He said to me. I don't have to, to uh, think about what He did to me all the time. I can forget about Him and God can bless me and help me to grow. Now some Christians have non-Christian spouse and the non-Christian spouse is not behaving well. But the Christians still grow in the Lord and, and are not, uh, they are not affected. Okay, so, um, so if we don't take care of our own personal problem, then it, there'll be warning that because if the spouse is not good, but then we don't take care of our own problems. In the marriage, we don't take care of our marriage, then uh, bad things can happen to us, that Satan can attack us. Um, I have seen families of pastors who have extramarital affair and then the marriage is broken. So uh, when there is wrath, 
the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. So if, if people have anger and wrath, it doesn't uh, build up the marriage and it will hurt the marriage. And so we have to say no to the words of people. If they say negative words, what people say just stay in the air for one second. If they yell at us, we don't have to take it seriously. It doesn't matter. It just stay in the air for a second. We just forget about it. If your spouse keep yelling at you, you just think about God, concentrate in God and praise God in the heart and not to be affected. Now, this is very difficult. This is very difficult. This is something I've learned that I've been hurt by people and at the same time when they hurt me I can be thinking about God and relaxing God and not to be affected by the person it's, it's something it's not easy to learn that we don't get don't keep thinking about the negative words of other people if they say negative words forget about it I don't have to worry about it and clear all the garbage so if how people hurt us and criticize us and how we dislike or despise ourselves how we criticize ourselves and have no hope all this garbage if we have garbage in our home in our heart we need to clear them so that we can have victory and the five steps to victory be aware of how we are affected by the people in the family believe that it's destructive apply biblical principle and pray to have forgiveness and strength and I choose to obey God I choose not to be affected by the person I choose to affect him positively I choose to be kind to him now that is that is uh, difficult okay I will stop here do you have any question do you have any question so um, <clears throat> so I would pause and then we'll come back in maybe 10 minutes and then you can ask questions and then we'll um, go for an inner session okay okay and uh, now for many people it a lot of these concepts could be new concepts it could be difficult uh, many people say why, sh why do I have to do all these things? If we don't do these things, we will destroy our own marriage, our life, and our life can never go better and better. Our marriage will have more and more problems. It, it's not going to get better. So we need, to need, we need the help of God to heal our family, to heal our relationship with our spouse, to heal our own behavior. Uh, so that we have a better marriage so that we can glorify God okay um, let's have a prayer and we ask God to examine our hearts oh Lord help us to examine our heart if we have not been faithful in our marriage if we have not loved the spouse and put time uh, give time to the spouse and care about the spouse and listen to the spouse and to the family members Lord forgive us We're sorry for our sins. We're sorry that we have sinned against our family members We are sorry that what we've done doesn't glorify God and give the devil a foothold Lord, please forgive us Be with us Give us strength. Give us wisdom how to handle the problems in the family father we thank you because you are a loving God you're a kind God you're a wonderful God and you can heal our family you can bring healing to any difficult family Lord be with us thank you father thank you father you are a loving God you're a kind God with you we can do everything hallelujah praise the Lord praise the Lord in Jesus name we pray amen Okay, God bless you. We'll stop for a little while now. Okay, bye-bye.